Uh, hello everybody, uh, today we're going to be learning about another type of collision. Um, we're going to be learning about collision with pixels and collision with color. Because um, for some, for most programs, the first collision uh, video would help you out. But like sometimes you have collisions with certain types of colors, right? So say you have a game where you have blue walls and you don't want people to go through blue walls or you want something you want them to die if they hit a blue wall then the first tutorial won't really be the best for you this tutorial will be better because then you'd have to find collisions for every single blue wall right so in this collision it checks um for a color and if the player hits a certain color then you can make it do whatever you want right so in this tutorial i have made it that blue walls are solid Right, so they not go through blue walls. Okay, and this is a very valuable lesson you should learn this because you will most likely use this sometime in the future. Uh, so right now, uh, there's two types of collision that you can do with um color, well, with any type of collision. But in this one, I'm going to be showing you collision with vertices and collision with sides or edges, whichever one you want to call it. And vertices are like on the square, they're like um, points on the square, and uh, edges are like the sides on the square. So, anyways, uh, let's look at the collision for vertices. So, uh, basically, uh, we get the reference for the x and y variables. And basically, what a reference is, it, it gets the address of the variable. Um, that's stored in memory, so you can actually change the the absolute value of the variable. If you don't have the ampersand symbol there, then what? Even if you change the value inside the function, it won't change it globally. So then the it won't affect the box. It only like it, it when you make when you don't make an ampersand, it makes a copy of the variable, right? So then you're not actually changing the real variable's value. You're only changing the value within the function. So anyways, now that we got that set, uh, basically, uh, this new function called getPixel, and it's built into Allegro, and basically it asks you for where you're getting the pixel from, and then the coordinates you're getting the pixel from. So basically, all I said is that you get the, get the pixel color from the buffer and from the x and y position, and uh, if it's and then if, if it's equal to the color that you specify, which you're gonna specify, right? Or so then this is x and y is the top corner of a square. Okay, so if we're talking about the square, it's the top left corner of any shape you draw. Okay, so I'm saying if the pixel uh of the x and y corners uh it's in the specif um is touching the specified color, right? So the reason why I put colors and parameters is because if you set a color, um, if say you want like three different colors you want them to collide with, right? Instead of making three different functions, you just put it all, you can just use the same function over and over. Like this is the, that's the good thing about recursion. Now, uh, anyway, so then if, so basically the top left corner hits the color, which is blue in my case, or the get pixel x plus 10 um, and y hits the color blue so if the, the top right point hits the my color then it checks for the direction you were moving in so if you're moving in the direction 180 which is moving left and if you uh, if you don't know trigonometry it's basically means it's moving left so if it was moving left then you move it um five spaces to the right and therefore it will stop and then it will look like it, it stops moving and then if the direction is 90 which means if the player was moving up then you you stop the player from moving and then same here same for same for over here now uh i did not explain that the best because i have a visual example okay so you might be asking me how come in this type of collision how come I only check for upward movement and left movement why don't I check for all types of movement if it ch if it hits the top or the the top left or the top right corner 
So then let me uh, look at this example, okay? So here are my blue walls, okay? And this is the shape, okay? So if the box is moving, 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 and it hits it, right? The top left corner has hit it when it was moving left, right? So it couldn't have been moving down or it couldn't have been moving right, right? It had to be moving left, right? So you check to see if it was moving left. So then what about if we move, uh, let's say we're moving up and the top left corner hits it. The top left corner or the top right corner won't hit an edge uh, if you're moving, uh, if we're moving up or down, right? And then the reason why we check for the right edge is in, in case that you're moving up and the left edge doesn't hit it, but the top right corner hits it, then the, a collision has happened. So let's move right over here. So right here, the, the, the top right did hit um the this oh sorry so the top right edge did hit the corner but in this case we're checking for the bottom right so the bottom right did hit it so it and then it, so it checks the it checks the direction you're moving so even though the top right and the top left hit it and the top right and the bottom right hit it so let's check for the bottom the top right first so since you weren't moving left or moving up then it'll go to the next one and it'll say oh the bottom right hit it also so it'll be like were you moving down or were you moving right and I'll be like you're moving right that means you should stop it from moving right and then same thing when you're moving down so uh sorry so if you're moving down so uh and then it will check the I will check that the bottom left and the bottom right hit it so we'll say Oh, was it moving right or was it moving down? And then when it was when it indicates that it was moving down, then it will stop it from moving. So I know it sounds confusing, but basically depending on which edge hits it, it will decide which direction to um um which direction to stop it from moving. So let's go back to over here. So then if the top left or the top right uh hits um hits a corner then I'll check to see if it's moving, if it was moving left or up, right? And I, whichever one it hit, then I'll move accordingly, right? Then if this hit the bottom left or the bottom right, then I will check, and then if it was moving right or if it was moving down, then I will move the shape accordingly. So uh, I hope you understood that, and if you need to pause the video to just look at how the code works, then you can. But I don't want to make this video too too long. Uh, so let's look at the collision with sides. So basically, I'm checking each single side to uh to see uh if it hit that side, and if it hit that side, then you move it accordingly. And let me just put. So you we get the pixel of X Y. So it's the top left. Um, of the shape and we check if it hits the color and if the color of X and the Y plus 10 so then if we look at our shape uh, so then this would be the top left corner up here and then X and Y plus 10 would be over here so then we're basically checking the whole left side of the shape so then we're checking we're saying if the left side of the shape is equal to the color we specified right uh, then that means if it, the left side hit it and then we move the shape five spaces to the right Because if you look over here um, The move speed is five. So if the player was moving five spaces to the left and they hit blue Right, then we move it five spaces to the right. So it looks like it's not moving right so uh, And then we do the same so then we check for the top side hit the top side then we move it down Then if it hit the right side then we move it to the left and then if it hit the bottom side, then we move it uh, up. And then just to show you the collision, how it works, uh, I'm gonna run this. So I'm first I'm gonna run the collision with the vertices. Uh, just give me a second. I'm sorry for rushing through this. So if you need any clarity or something, just inbox me. So if you look right here, it's probably going to be laggy. 
uh, see it collides with the blue, so you can't go through it in every direction. And let's do the collision with the sides. Now I can't really say which one's more effective. It just depends on um, what you're trying to do in your program. Um, but yeah, oh, you and I'll show you one more thing after. And same thing with this type of collision. The sides. See, so it collides. And that's how you do a collision. Now you don't want to ask for the color. The and I made it an integer. Make call as an integer type so you can specify the color in here, right? And uh, now sometimes you need to check for both. If you're like if you're so into physics, right? And you wanna um like the perfect type of collision, and you wanna do like whatever you can you can check for point on point collision point on edge collision or edge on edge collision and uh gyro vorbis on youtube uh a uh, girl named kendall i think her name is uh she kind of explains um about um point on edge collision and edge on edge collision and if you're interested i'm gonna put the link in the description and uh she'll basically explain it um what it is to you so, uh, basically that's it for this tutorial, and the next tutorial is about loading maps. So, hope you like this, thanks for watching, and bye.